Uh, my name is uh, Mokam Sandhu. Uh, it might be amusing for you people to know that I myself studied at the University of Illinois for five years and uh, was a student at uh, Champaign-Urbana campus of the University of Illinois. I did my uh, metallurgical engineering there, but at that time I had not yet come into contact with Baba. I came into contact through, to Baba through my wife and her parents who had come into contact with Baba before I was married. Uh, they came into contact with Baba when he was in Dehradun in 1953. I came into contact with Baba much later and uh, of course there are many incidents that one can associate with Baba within my life and within the life of my family and children. Once when we had gone to uh, uh, Pune for Baba Saivas, the East-West uh, meeting, there were lots of people, thousands of people, and in this crowd of people who were uh, embracing Baba, touching his feet and passing by, my son left a ring, which I am now wearing, uh, in Baba's feet. And when he was later asked, he said, well, I have given it to Baba. Of course, we thought that he had uh, lost it somewhere in the crowd and we would never see it. Next day, however, one of Baba's messengers came to the hotel where we were staying. Without knowing my name, without knowing my son's name, Baba sent this ring back to us saying, Baba has blessed it. Baba takes nothing from anybody, but with his blessings you may keep this ring which your son had left at his feet. It is amazing. Whatever one may know, whatever one may think, how Baba was able to trace the owner of that ring left by the thousand, in amongst the thousands of people back to us. Uh, Baba says and has always said that he does not perform any miracles nor was his purpose of coming to this world in the human form to perform miracles. Yet every day in our lives these miracles like this happen and even though we believe in Baba we still feel that this is a miracle or one of the miracles that touch our heart. Once I went to Baba, I had recently read a few books by a German author which some of you may have read. Uh, the book is called uh, The Chariots of the Gods and also called another one called Was God an Astronaut. With this book fresh in my mind, I asked my wife to ask Baba which planet does he belong to? Since according to this book it was proven that God had come from some extraterrestrial origin. Baba laughed at me, gave a nice beautiful smile and said, I don't come from any planet, I don't belong to any planet. All planets belong to me, I am the universal uh, soul. The whole universe is mine and I am the entire universe. It, it, this idea, this thought for him to straight away say mean, meant much more than any other rehearsed or semi-rehearsed or any other words that he could have said to me at that time. Amongst other things, as you perhaps see from uh, my dress, my turban, my beard, that I am a follower of uh, Guru Nanak and Guru Gobind Singh, one of the Sikh uh, religions, one of the foremost Northern India religions today. The religion formed more than 500 years ago. And I also thought to myself that, all right, I have been brought up in this religion. The day Baba died, left his human form, we got a telegram and I said to myself, let me from the holy book of the Sikhs find whether there is, there is any message from Baba to me. And sure enough, this book which was written in the 15th century, I opened it at random, it's 1430 pages long. The book opened on page 724 and the hymn on that page was Meherban, Meherban, Sahib, Mera, Meherban, which means Meherban, also means merciful. But his name repeated three times in succession to say my master is Meherban and repeated again in that same hymn were the words Parvardigar, were the words Creator and all the words that Baba called himself by 
came in that hymn, anybody can read it in that book which was written 400 years ago. That book, that hymn is written by the fifth teacher of the six and repeat, on the day that I received the telegram that Baba had left his human form, I opened the book and there it is. I don't say it is a miracle, yet certainly it was a message that I received from Baba in my Now, as I was saying, this book was written more than five centuries ago. Uh, it was the fifth teacher of the uh, Sikhs who wrote this book. D Baba did not perform any miracle. This book performed no miracle. All it did was to answer my question, to give me a message from Meher Baba, a final message which said, Meherban is my master, Meherban, Meherban. My question asked to me is how is it that I am still being a staunch follower of Guru Gobind Singh and being still a Sikh, I am consistently able to follow Baba and accept Baba as avatar of the age. This question was in my heart and in a gathering I was unable to speak. Yet Baba gave the answer saying, I am avatar of this age. I have come not to teach but to awaken. I have no special religion. All religions are mine. That one particular line went straight to my heart saying to me at least that following any religion was perfectly consistent with believing in Baba and not inconsistent with any of Baba's, his own teachings, his own uh, love and uh, prem that he was giving me at that time. Well, you see, uh, one of the sports that the British left us with is the sport of pig sticking. Uh, this is going after wild boar in uh, river Khadar area, which is bushy and uh, sort of plain, uh, on horseback with a spear. It's a very dangerous sport. And in one of the... My horse stumbled over the wild boar. The wild boar died. The horse died. I landed on my shoulder. It was very badly uh, smashed up and dislocated. I went back to Delhi, we were about 80 miles out of Delhi at that time, went to hospital, got it set, yet it was still giving me a lot of trouble. I went for Baba's Darshan along with my family. At that time I found out that Dr. Harry Kenmore, who is a very famous uh, chiropractor of New York, who a great Baba lover, was there. So I asked Baba's permission, I said to Baba, do you mind if uh, Harry Kenmore looks at my shoulder also? Baba said, I am the biggest doctor. He put his hand on my shoulder and I never had any trouble with the shoulder again. Two other friends of mine who fell on the same day in a similar accidents and had the shoulder dislocated. One of them had to leave the army because his shoulder never got set again. One of them had to go to England to get it properly treated. I think uh, Harry Kenmore, if he, even if he had seen it, would not have done as much as Baba did by just touching my shoulder once and saying he was the biggest doctor of all. Uh, actually now sitting with me is my wife Kusum. She uh, was, was the... Uh, it was through her that I came into uh, contact with Baba. Her family had come into contact with Baba before I did and uh, I, perhaps she would like to say something. Would you darling? Uh, you must have read this uh, book called Wayfarers. There's a mention of my father's state called Sahanpur near Najibabad, where Baba had contacted some us. So my father had uh, met Baba in Dehradun, and I was visiting him at that time, and then I met Baba. So Baba told all of us that Baba is not an ordinary saint or a sadhu or some such person, because his state belonged to a place uh, near Haridwar. And he had met hundreds and thousands of sadhus and great souls that in that area. And straight away at that time, Baba came out with the message called Highest of the High. And uh, in that, Baba explains himself to be uh, the God. And just before that, he declared himself as avatar in Mehrastana. And what else to say? Uh, what did Baba have to say to you uh, personally? Uh, tell them about that incident about the sari. 
Uh, when Baba had given his first public darshan in March in uh, Dehradun, I had a beautiful silk sari, almost the same color, and I spread it out for Baba to come and walk on it as he came to sit on the chair that was uh, very beautifully decorated for him. And we all had gone to have Baba's session at that time. Uh, and, um, yeah. Again? Uh, um, in 60 or was it 61, I'm not sure, um, Baba had given public darshan and ha had called everybody group wise. And uh, the instructions were that you were to come, stay in the public darshan for two hours, go away, not to talk to Baba, not to discuss anything with him, not to bring any gifts not and not even fold your hands like that, yes. And uh, I decided that it was pointless to go all the way to Pune from Delhi. And when, and when I can't when I can't even talk to Baba, I, when I can't even say anything to him. So she wrote a letter uh, to Baba asking that will he, will he give us even one minute uh, of private darshan? This, I did not know about this letter. She had um, written it uh, secretly or stealthily. We, we got an open telegram from Baba saying that no, no, no need for you to come this time, come next time. However, somehow it got about that she um, insisted on going and perhaps the n day before the darshan was to end, we got the night ML uh, plane, arrived in Bombay and took a fast train to Pune. We went for the two hour darshan and then that was the end of the program as far as we were concerned. We were staying in a hotel and some other Baba lovers called us for lunch, something like that. We went around town. And uh, one morning we were supposed to leave that day. Suddenly there was a knock on our door. I, I joked with her. I said, well, Baba is calling you now to give you private darshan. And sure enough, there was, uh, mm, no, there was, the telephone what, was no, what was the name of the gentleman? <laughs> Uh, sure enough, uh, Gadikar uh, came to invite us for lunch, whereas we were planning to go back to Delhi earlier. But uh, while he was talking to us, uh, Mayor Das came and Mayor Das said, What are you doing over here? Hurry up, Baba is calling you. So I looked at her and she looked at me. He, she says, How do you know that Baba was calling us? I said, I just joked with you. I wasn't uh, serious. What had happened, what had happened actually, that one train of Baba lovers coming from Hamirpur side had derailed somewhere yeah, and yeah. near Jhansi and they were unable to uh, get to uh, Pune in time for the darshan. So Baba had specially called those people to come and see him on a day even though their darshan program was finished. And we were fortunate enough that day to get a private audience with uh, Baba and I was able to talk to him, I was able to receive his love and his and affection Baba and Baba embraced me where I knew from the telegram that I was told that I was not even to fold my hands but to receive Baba's uh, blessings and grace like this was a very great experience to me. You want to say something? Yes, I think uh, uh, we were very disappointed that Baba had uh, sent us a telegram not to come and that Baba is with, with us, there is no need for us to be there. But uh, somehow something happened in my husband's heart and he started uh, forcing me to go. We said, what, ha what has happened to you? Why do you want to go? He said, no, no, I think Baba is calling us. Let's go. So with greatest of difficulty, we got the train tickets and plane tickets and somehow we reached Baba. And uh, then, of course, we were just joking and all. And Meher Das came. You must have heard uh, his, men his uh, name being mentioned in Listen Humanity. He is the one who, who is from Hamipur district who made a dead child come to life by taking Baba's name and Baba had told him not to do this kind of miracles again in his name and he called us and Baba gave us private uh, sort of interview and he talked to us for almost 10-15 minutes and embraced both of us and gave us a uh, lot of love and prashad and all that. It's a great experience. Yes. Well, I think uh, with, with this both of us say Jai Baba to all the Baba lovers all over the world, whoever, come in, whoever comes into contact with Baba and Baba's love. Jai Baba. Well, I've just remembered an incident that happened in 1962 in East-West gathering. There were over uh, thousands of people in a big uh, pandal and Baba was giving darshan sitting on a huge uh, shamiana. And all of a sudden I was asked to 
come on the stage and give a song, or rather give a hymn uh, composed by Guru Nanak, our first uh, teacher. And uh, this song I'm going to sing this afternoon also, so you can hear it at that time. After giving that song, uh, Baba embraced me. And when Baba embraced me, I was, uh, I heard very fantastic sound coming. The sound was so fantastic, it was, uh, it was too overwhelming and very loud and something that I'd never heard in my life before. And... Uh, was it pleasant it, to hear that sound? It was very thrilling and I think that because of that sound that uh, made me lose my consciousness. And then uh, Irish Pai sort of shook me and said, come on Kusum, get up and uh, this thing. And Baba praised my voice and said, you have a very beautiful voice. And then he told all the people gathered over there that this, is, this wasn't an ordinary song that I sung. It was composed by Guru Nanak and it was just like God's own uh, song. And Baba was very happy with me. When I came down from the stage, I met Adi Kaka and I asked him if Baba has any trouble with his chest because I had so, uh, such funny sound coming out of his chest and he started to laugh. And then he told me that I'm very lucky that I had this experience with Baba. And by, it was really Baba's blessing that I had to, I had gone through this experience. What kind of sound was that? It was like a, like a engine train, a train engine going very fast while you're standing on a platform, very loud, and the whole platform shakes, or like the plane that uh, goes uh, out, or when it's coming down to land, like you want to close your ears, but you just can't uh, help but listen to it, and it's too loud. Very, very loud. Was it one of the darshans given by Baba in Kuru Prasad at Pune, our dear friend Dr. G.S.N. Murthy was also present. And Dr. Murthy is a very eloquent speaker in Baba's name and very good speaker at that. Baba called him and said, Murthy, please come and give a speech. So he said, Baba, how can I give a speech in front of you? He said, no, no, you come and give a speech. So Murthy Bhai got very pleased, very honored. He came quickly to the dais, raised his hand and he said, Jai Baba, brothers and sisters, as if to go into his speech, Baba tickled him. Murthy is very ticklish. So Murthy immediately stopped. He said, Baba, how can I make a speech when you are tickling me? He said, no, 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 you go ahead and make your speech. I won't tickle you. So again, Murthy Bhai started, Jai Baba, brothers and sisters. Suddenly Baba signaled Erich. Erich tickled Murthy on the other side. So again, Murthy said, Baba, look at this. Now Erich is tickling me. How can I continue with my speech? So Baba said, no, no, you have finished your speech. That's enough. That's enough. Once everybody is sitting here and you realize that everybody is brothers and sisters, there is no further speech necessary. And of yes, course, brother. universal brotherhood immediately came into our own hearts. And we were, I and my wife, of course, looked at each other and thought that this is how Baba does his, makes us understand what we should or should not think. All right? Yeah. This was in 53 when uh, we had met Baba. Baba had come and uh, took two houses, one for himself and one for the Mandli. And my, in Dehradun, my parents' house was just next door where the Mandli was staying. And uh, Baba used to come in the afternoon, every afternoon to see the Mandli from his own house. There. Baba used to uh, come uh, to visit the house where Mandli was staying from his own house. And in between there was the one house which was de deserted and they had uh, cut across a small path through that house so that Baba was not uh, sort of to go to the main road and he could come between these, this house to the Mandli. And we used to sit in this deserted house in the big compound, there was a beautiful tree and myself with my parents we used to sit under that tree and see Baba every day. And my parents was uh, asked many times. Uh, as uh, whether we were disturbing him by being there. And Baba said, no, no, don't worry, my nazar is on you. You don't have to worry about that. I'm very happy and uh, I'm very happy to see you. Don't worry. So then on the 25th of March, there was this public session and Mokam had come from Delhi for that. So I asked Baba, Baba, is there any message for him? Please give him any message, if there's any message. So Baba said, no, for him there is no message. Just love me more and more. You all know and you love me and for him he should just love me more and more. And that's enough. Afterwards, Baba distributed Pashat to all of us uh, and embraced us.
बस आप बताओ कुछ एज यू से दैट मैसेज वॉज फॉर मी एंड आई हैव मोरल दैट मैसेज टू हार्ट एंड आई डू बिलीव that loving baba baba loved us much more than loving though of course as you as my wife says he loves always loved us more than we can ever possibly love him 